of Undead and Understanding, posted by Felix Lavolpe. Be me, modified Pathfinder campaign. Took some stuff from 3.5 and other versions to stick in there. DM loves large scale campaigns. Let us do anything we can come up with as long as it's within reason and our power. Party wants to make the world a better place. Most of them. Human Paladin, Elven Ranger, Dwarven Defender, some super tanky fighter, Elven Druid, all good people. Then there was Astrashan. Astrashan was a necromancer. A blend of a peel master and a dread slash true necromancer to make the class more viable since alone they have issues and it made the abilities match the fluff. A grey necromancer as we called it was in a bit of an odd spot when it came to alignment. Somewhere between neutral evil and pure neutral. Nothing like the rest of her free spirited band of do-gooders. Wasn't particularly malicious but just very devoted to his craft. All things died in time. There was a balance to uphold in that regard, and it was his task to do so. Naturally, none of the party liked him, but they knew that they could trust him due to how painfully honest he was. The kind of honest that would tell a child straight to their face that they were going to die. Nice. (laughs) Party was also extremely uncomfortable with his presence. It didn't help that he was lich-loved with a grafted arm, and as such, practically dead. Wasn't flashy or prideful, he wore modest grey robes with some armour over top if needed. No weapons other than his magic in his hands. Almost no sense of self-preservation. Death was just another part of life to him, and he would face his as necessary. Extended his train of thought to the rest of the party as well. He would do what he could to keep them alive with temporary health and undead to shield them, but once they started dying, it was improper for him to intervene. Paladin and the Druid hated his partially non-functional guts. DM is great, plays off with this whenever he gets a chance. Start out clearing dungeons as usual. Party extremely uncomfortable with the fact one of his arms is skeletal and can kill things with touch. Even more so when they find out one of those things each day can become a zombie that he can indefinitely control. More on top of that, when they find out the ones he raises normally, he strips of all their flesh and crams the skeletons into bags of holding so he doesn't need waste spells controlling them. The party is well aware that he's slowly creating an army of the undead, mostly due to the fact that he is making no effort to hide it. When the party needs a distraction or more damage, he gives a skeleton bag, has it run out somewhere and dump it to make 8-10 to ten more skeletons come out. Doesn't control those ones, but as long as the enemy is closer than the party, it doesn't matter. Party slowly making their way north due to rumours of a city in distress that needs help. Astrashan stores all his undead in one of the dungeons and prepares to portal to it as an emergency escape or source of reinforcements. Stuck with a necromancer who can rip open a portal to your room with a couple of hundred undead at a moment's notice, their paranoia knows no bounds. Make it to a large city that has recently been attacked by, you guessed it, hordes of undead. Districts are all closed off. People are still paranoid and scared. Thrilled to see the party, not so much to see Astrashan. Sent into an area that had been breached, declared out and search for survivors, if any. Go over the makeshift barricade, undead shambling all over the streets and buildings. Some were clearly the attacking force, armoured skeletons that were sent over the walls. Others were obviously the turned corpses of the civilians, deciding on a plan on how to get through it all. They could fight them, but if they got surrounded, there would be issues. Halfway through the planning, the druid asks where Astrashan went. Paladin spots him walking down the street, politely walking around the undead that didn't care about him being among them. Party grumps and continues planning as he calmly nudges the skeletons into a small grip, almost as if he was helping an older person across the street. (laughs) <laughs> Cast command undead gets them in order form a line stretching across the street as he asks the party to get off the barrier the main threat now dealt with paladin and dwarf grump past without a word taking down zombies in hand in hand without much issue as the ranger and druid fire arrows astrashan and the skeletons simply retrieve bodies and respectfully lay them down beside the buildings After sweeping a few streets, the ranger heard soft crying from one of the buildings. Absolutely packed with zombies, they heard it too and started swarming. Once more, Astrashan simply walked through the horde, politely moving them aside as he was going through a crowded affair. What? Yeah, like, what do you expect? My necromancer, you know what I mean? It's one of those ones. 
After he made his way through, he slipped through the barricade door, locking it shut behind him as he disappeared. Party waited outside as the crying stopped, but after a few minutes of the mage not returning, they decided that something awful happened and they needed to kill the necromancer. The zombies were of little threat to the high-level party, but there was certainly no shortage of them and it took time to work through them all. When they finally reached the upstairs bedroom, the paladin kicked down the door, ready to bash Astrashan's skull in for performing some horrid ritual on a survivor. Instead, they find him sitting on the floor of the small injured girl in his arms, quietly whispering her lullabies. Even the paladin can see she wasn't going to make it. Astrashan ignored their questions as he stayed with her, singing until her eyes closed and didn't open again. Druid took the high ground and demanded to know what happened. Astrashan explained she had been injured by a zombie, told her that she wasn't going to make it. He asked her if she wanted it to be over quickly. She said no, too scared. Promised to stay with her until it was over instead. Jaws hit the floor. Pick her up and walk away from the party. Set her body on the bed and cover it in her sheets like a shroud. DM passed a note to me to change his alignment to neutral. Ranger had tears in his eyes. Snapped her neck in front of the entire party to make sure she wouldn't rise, including the ranger who was crying about how beautiful what he just did was. What? Fuck me. <laughs> DM took the note back. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ranger doesn't like him anymore. Clear out the district. No survivors beyond the one Astrashan found. Civilians are extremely against the fact that there is now a necromancer inside the city with a couple of dozen armoured skeletons. Too terrified to do anything. Guards have PTSD and won't even try. Astrashan is officially in charge of clearing out infested areas since the undead don't even see him. Polly is assigned to keep an eye on him since the city doesn't trust him. Polly is looking for excuses to smite Astrashan into a pile of dust. Astrashan doesn't take notice. Keeps doing his work. Slowly but surely, the dynamic duo were clearing out the city while the rest of the party is out searching for where the undead all came from. Civilians get little comfort as the skeletons bring bodies out of the lost district and bury them all day by day. Pally has his magical Mormon underwear in a twist because Astrashan doesn't kill any of the armoured skeletons, just bags them up or portals them off somewhere. Re kills and buries all the zombies though, which is going completely over Pally's head. As the last district is getting cleaned out, the other half of the party returns. Apparently a massive death cult had been disguised as adventurers and clearing out bandit groups and dungeons. Been gathering bodies up and resurrecting them. Unleashed them on a city all at once. Party instantly breaks down and starts discussing whether Astrashan is in the cult or not. Pally makes sure to point out that Astrashan is in fact an evil necromancer with a giant horde of undead on hand. Once I'm dead. Ranger brings up the little girl, which she is significantly less salty about now. Thinks he's okay. Druid thinks he's an abomination that is the exact opposite of everything she stands for. Wants him dead. Dwarf makes the amazing observation that has gone over the rest of the party's head for the past few sessions. Astrashan has never raised something that hasn't tried to kill innocent people. And only keeps the bodies of those who have. All the bodies in that dungeon are monsters and murderers. All the decent people he's given full burials. He's not trying to destroy or conquer. He's just keeping the status quo and needs to deal with evil magic to do so. Votes in favour of the necromancer? Party is tied. Astrashan refuses to vote for or against himself. DM passes a note. Change to pure neutral. Weeks pass. Party has been helping the town recover. Citizens are okay with the skeletons that patrol the town and protect the graveyard. Astrashan has started making their armour with white handprints to tell them apart. Alright, Saruman. I know what I was to say. Can you die in there, would you? Astashan has been using them to clean up the graves and give people proper burials, taking care of crime too. Nobody asks where the bandits disappeared to. Locals don't want to kill the necromancer for once. Party getting ready to move on since things are under control. Can't have that though. One morning a scout comes barreling into town. Turns out a neighbouring lord wants to use the recent undead issue as a good opportunity to expand his borders. Next morning there is an army camped outside. Town is panicking, outnumbered by a good margin and nowhere to run. Oh, I wonder what will happen. <laughs> Polly and Dwarf start organising construction on the walls. Ranger and Druid summoning trees and animals to come help from the nearby woods. 
Astashan meets up with the army and town guard to have a discussion. Next morning, everyone is on the walls. Ranger and a dwarf making Lord of the Rings jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Astashan and a full company of skeletons are at the gates. Ladders hit the walls and the rams start to not so politely knock on the door. Walls are chaos. Players are doing all they can to hold the line. Somebody opens the gate and rams get set aside as the army charges in. Skeletons are getting slowly pushed back. The units on the walls are retreating back to the gatehouse. Use the skeletons as a rear guard to allow the army and guards to fall back up the street. All the side roads are blocked off with makeshift walls. It's a one-way road to the keep. Enemy army is pouring into the city, cut down the last of the skeletons and charge after our forces. Men have nowhere to run. Form one big shield wall and get ready to die protecting the keep. Astashan is nowhere to be seen. The enemy army forms their own shield wall in the streets, forming up for the last push. The boom of the gate slamming shut echo through the town. Some of the invaders turn in time to notice some of the fallen starting to shake. The party notices that all of the rising guards have white handprints on their armours. Every single one was near the walls and gate. None of them fell back with the others. Astoshan appears atop the gatehouse as the bodies of a hundred guard upon the walls and at the gates start to rise. The handprints on their armours glowing as they let out a horrid cry. A fallen captain stumbles out of the gatehouse. A bloody banner with a handprint and white text clutched in his hands. Even in death I shall protect. They shamble behind the enemy forces and form a small infantry block, not nearly enough to be a threat. The invading army laughs at the pathetic attempt of a pincer that the town mustered. The sacrifice of the guards merely an annoyance. Then the portal opened. Hundreds of zombies and skeletons pour out of the rift. With a roar, the fallen guards charged alongside the horde. Slam into the flank. The living charge and hit them head on. Invading armies stuck between a bunch of pissed off defenders and a swarm of undead that doesn't end. Pretty soon, groups start to surrender, running to the defenders to get away from the horde that doesn't care. Undead guards form another shield wall, facing the horde with the invaders to their backs. Living guards run over and form up with them, start pushing, slowly pushing back the swarm of skeletons and zombies. Some of the invaders join in to help the push, horde getting stuffed back into the portal. The undead guards follow them in, holding back the mindless undead. As the living back away, the undead turn to face them, spreading their arms wide to keep the tide back. As the portal closes, they smile. Two weeks later, invading army was sent home, allowed to take their dead with them. Dwarf figure out what happened. Astashan had talked to the guards and asked if any of them would volunteer to be brought back when they died. Most said no, but one full company agreed. They were brought back willingly so their souls stayed behind sacrifice their rest in the afterlife to defend their families. Grip get ready to leave, get a parade and a feast in their honour before they go. Astashan doesn't attend. He doesn't eat and isn't exactly a fan of parties, stays back at the crypts. Once he's sure he's the only one there, he opens a new portal. As he steps through, he sees the corpses of the guards working, building what appears to be a bark from the mining areas of the dungeon. Mindless undead were corralled into another section that could be opened or closed if needed. Fallen captain sees him and roars, the rest of the guards dropping their work and running over, swarm together for a moment, then gather their gear and organise, form into parade line and stand at attention behind the captain. He points towards what will become the platform for the permanent portal back to the crypt in town. There's a statue. It's Astashan with 144 small shields decorating the stand one for each of the volunteers. He smiles softly as he turns and goes through the portal, the newly named Sleepless Watch Company following him back home. As he passed the statue, he read the words carved at its base. Our service, eternal. Our sacrifice, infinite. Our regrets, absent. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but today's sponsor is Coinbase. Have you been thinking about getting into cryptocurrency recently with everything that's going on? Well, maybe now would be a good time to get into cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum or Litecoin. Well, why not consider using Coinbase? It's a great all-in-one platform to buy and sell cryptocurrencies. And one of the features that I think is pretty based 
is being able to set up a recurring purchase, be it every day, every week, or a month. It makes it much easier to slowly invest in the crypto. And also, being able to set up alerts when a cryptocurrency goes over a set amount makes it far easier to cash out big time. We've all seen the videos of, you know, the yeah. uh, sell, 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 sell. <laughs> yeah, know. getting the alerts really help. And best of all, you will receive 10 US dollars of Bitcoin when you buy or sell 100 US dollars or more on Coinbase. Go check out the top link down below and get the invite and get yourself a tenner and get yourself into that cryptocurrencies. Now let's get back to the video. This is part two of Undead and Understanding, The Dead Exodus. Be me. Modified Pathfinder campaign. Same group as before. Still Astashan. DM is split Undead into Undead and Deathless to make it easier to track Astrashan's raised. Undead are the corpses forcefully brought back via dark magic. Deathless are bodies brought back by volunteers who retain their minds since their soul is still bound, but their bodies are still mostly dead. Basically intelligent Undead that aren't bound under anyone's control. Effectively makes raising Deathless a neutral action since it's dark magic but not forcing it on anyone. On the flip side, whoever's being raised needs to be aware of it and willing to return. Makes it significantly harder to raise Deathless since most people don't want to be brought back into a corpse. The Deathless are not undead, so they fall under regular leadership instead of undead leadership. More importantly, they are intelligent all the way down the chain, so they may bring their own men and friends. This means Astrashan can raise a leadership army and an undead leadership army at the same time as well as those controlled by the touch and hit dice. The undead slash deathless army is now nearing 1,000 members, directly under his leadership, not counting the uncontrolled horde and bags of skeletons. Party has gotten used to having an army on demand and enjoy having it since it allows us to go into field battles without needing a city backing us. Need to miss a few games due to other plans, but the party wants to keep going. Talk to the DM to work something out that is a challenge to the party while also still including Astashan. Brilliant strikes and we both get neutral evil grins. Begin the plot. Party is travelling east to deal with a band of raiders that are pillaging the country. Basically giant hordes of not Vikings. Yeah. Astrashan has been abnormally motivated and has bruised himself hunting down mages in the ranks. Taking their bones and covering them in ruins before storing them away in his dungeons. Party is more than a little disturbed by these actions, since they are uncharacteristically dark. The giant horde of undead was proven to have a purpose, but there was no positive to this. Nobody wants to ask him either. They ignore it and continue tracking down warbands. Encounter one outside a large town. Hundreds of men burning and pillaging the town. Party sits down to strategize. Decide that two companies of deathless should be enough to support rip open the portal and march out the Endless Crusade and the Scorched Suns. Enemies in life, rival vanguard trips and death, constantly trying to outdo each other to prove their superiority since even death won't let them get along. Make sure they have their helmets, visors, turbans, masks on before we send each round the flank. Most towns aren't huge fans of being rescued by what they see as undead. Party naturally goes straight down the middle. Clearing the main road as we work our way towards the town square. Slaying hill giants and casters and raiders with player classes. Rise the falling giants and send them out of town as we keep pushing forward. Need the utility but can't use them here without scaring the locals. Finally get to the town square and link up with both deathless companies. Sons got there first so naturally they are reminding the crusade of their inferiority. Find the Jarl and let the defenders go one-on-one -on -one with him in a duel. Barely pulls out a win against the Jarl. The rest of the raiders are captured or try to run. Crusaders and sons are using it as a chance to see who has better archers. Drag the captured into the square and hand them over to the townspeople. Except for one. Right before the villagers reach their conquered attackers, Astashan calmly walks into the middle of the tied-up men. Singles out a man covered in bones and totems. Grabs him by the head and energy drains him to death in front of the entire town. Pally loses his shit over what he just did. Druid loses her shit when Astashan ignores him and drags the corpse through the portal with the deathless. Whole party loses their shit when he closes the portal behind him. Honestly, see at this point, 
Do they really care? <laughs> like, you know, I'm sorry, but you've been marching about with an undead or army for like, you know, quite a few months at this yeah. point. Are you really going to be like, ooh, burn the heretic? Like, come on, here, guys. <laughs> come on, guys. I think you've just been warped just as much. Like, you know. Party starts to book it back to the city, where they know there is a permanent portal in the barracks for the Sleepless Watch. Pally and Druid are giving the I told you so speech to the Defender and Ranger. A few days later, they reach the city, but nobody there seems to have noticed anything wrong. Party doesn't like that. Get to the barracks and start searching. All the watch are gone. All their equipment is gone too. Party finds their way down to the catacombs and search until they find the portal, relieved that it's still open. Prepare all the empty undead they can and get ready to storm in. Pally goes through first. Rest of the party waits a few seconds before piling in after him. Run straight into his back once they get through. Pally didn't move once he got to the other side. Couldn't believe what he saw. Dungeon was empty. Massive tracks leading straight north. Party haul ass after it. Can't miss the trail of dead and dying plants and thousands of footprints. Terrain starts getting snowy as they keep going north into raider territory. Trail suddenly makes a turn and spreads out. Run straight through the woods to the remains of a wooden raider town. Buildings are smashed and burnt. No bodies. Trail keeps heading north. Party stays on it. Fighting off monsters and wildlife, but no raiders anywhere in sight. Over the next few days, the pattern repeats. The horde shift directions and goes through a ruined town or village. No corpses left behind. After almost two weeks, they finally catch up with the horde. They find it on an open snow plain in battle formation against a massive horde of marauders. The local chiefs had all united to push back the horde that was ploughing through their lands. Astashan and the Deathless were in rank formation with each company flying their banners. There were 12 companies as well as the undead giants behind them throwing boulders. The tribes were easily triple that number and were well aware of it. The marauders charged as the party debated what side to join the battle on. Before they could come to a decision, the defender, always the most observant, pointed out that the horde was missing. The party turned just in time. The watches all the snow around the charging tribesmen started to move. Thousands upon thousands of undead claw their way out of the snow. Marauders instantly surrounded with more coming out by their feet. Deathless companies all level their weapons and charge into melee. Party votes to sit out in this one. Battle is over quickly as the tribes are overrun from the start and Astashan just walks through with AoE abilities that kill them and heal his army. Deathless form a square perimeter as soon as it's over, while the undead mill around inside. Party sets up camp to wait out whatever's going on. Paladin knows something is wrong with the land, but he isn't sure what. Takes shifts sleeping all night. Astashan's army doesn't move until exactly 24 hours after the battle. All at once the corpses of the raiders stand. Deathless turn and start the march while keeping the square formation to hold the rogue undead in. Get the horde moving north again. No bodies left behind. Paladin identifies the taint as cursed earth. Whatever Astashan was doing, it was important enough that he was willing to permanently curse all land within a mile of the battlefield. Party follows the army for another day before they stop. All of them were being directed at a northern city at the base of a mountain. The horde wastes no time going for the gates. Giants are flinging bags of holding full of skeletons over the walls while the deathless stand guard around them. Party vote 3 to 1 to stop Astashan before he wipes out an entire city, even if they are murderous raiders. Dwarf still has his back and believes that all of this is for a good reason. Prepare to charge through a weak point in his army, but are surprised when the deathless on that flank simply get out of their way. Party ignore it and ride straight through to the necromancer in the middle of the deathless formation. Find Astashan standing and watching the mindless undead swarm through the city. He's a far cry from when they last saw him, covered head to toe in armour made of bones inscribed with black runes. Four skeletal arms are grafted to his back, giving him a look like a spider. Each is lazily outstretched, holding a black sapphire. Paladin has been OCD researching necromancy since Astashan left and knows they must be soulbound. Party is throwing an absolute shit fit and demanding an explanation. Astashan slowly looks over to them as calm as always, repaying a promise to some old friends. 
goes back to watching the carnage. Party rolls up and the fight begins. Astashan isn't built for solo fighting, but he's no slouch, and some of the rogue undead are nearby to help. Everyone but the dwarf panic when the deathless all start to charge. Dwarf isn't surprised when they all run straight past everyone towards the city. Party trying to fight the necromancer and the zombie giants without hitting any of the deathless that they've gotten to know. Astashan is fighting extremely defensively, mostly healing and throwing out just enough damage to stop from getting ganged up on. Pally destroys the soulbound sapphires one by one. Each release the soul of a raider spellcaster and weakens him a bit. After a while, the party finally brings him down, but by then, the city has completely fallen. Party deciding what to do when Astashan's cohort Baramit comes back from the city with a company. Pally isn't sure since the party had almost never seen him. Respectfully bows to the party and without a word, opens another portal. Massive column of deathless start to make their way out. Almost all of them are in civilian clothing. All bore wounds from axes and spears. Many of them give their thanks to the company and the party as they pass into the city. The last out of the portal are the remnants of a small village. They were all more skeletal than the rest, had obviously been gone for far longer. All went to the city. In less than a week, the city had been repaired and many of the homes had drastically changed in style. Party learned their towns had all been destroyed by the raiders and most of them were cut down during those raids. During their travels, Astashan had Baramit travelling the land and raising all the towns that had been destroyed by the raiders, had promised them a second chance in a new home where they would be able to go to rest when they were ready. Party has the fields and agreed to attend Astashan's funeral the next day. The entire city is in attendance at the town square in the morning. The sleepless watch were the colour guard for the procession. Once it reached the centre of town, it stopped and set the lidless coffin in the middle of the main road. Two of the lifeless from the old village came forward and knelt by the coffin as it started to glow with holy energy. All the party but the defender are confused. Dwarf was the only one in the party who bothered talking to Astrashan enough to know what his ring familiar Bahone was capable of. For a moment, Astrashan shuddered then slowly pulled himself upright. One of the old deathless leapt forward and hugged him as he returned its embrace. For the first time the party had ever seen his face wasn't cold and emotionless. His voice was different. He sounded alive. He was crying. It's okay, Mom. I'm all right. You know, I love going back and doing Felix's stories because he really does have a way of just making characters that you want to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Any Every single one of his characters, it's like, oh, mate, I would love to do that. Plus, you know he I mean? writes it so well. I know well. he does. He's so good at it. I so love, I, 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 li- Literally I, nearly every story you read from him, you get some sort of feels. Yeah, you do. I, I, you always want to be like, I feel like a bit of a fanboy whenever we go back and do his stuff. But look, boys, let us know what you thought. What other stories you want us to do? I don't really like doing them all that often. Just like, you know, maybe once a fortnight, maybe once a month sort of thing. Short stories like this, like, we're not talking about, like, the All Guardsman Party and and something. No, the All Guardsman Party isn't finished yet. And I'm definitely not doing Shadowgun because that is, like, over, like, 30 hours of audio. (laughs) And And I have... I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just too much. Even if it's a great story, it's just too big for us to go back and redo at this yeah. point. We've got other. Big but if, you, if there's any other like short stories that m- made it like might have been like your favorite from the past, like some of the text to speech ones, put it down below and you we'll know we we'll might get it. a redo of it. You know, you never know. You never know. There, there was so many great stories that we did. I don't. You know, I like going back and redoing them because I think it's fun. Yeah. I like the stories. Yeah. But like as always, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, remember, like, comment, subscribe, all that other good shit. Check the links like, down below, and we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>